Okay, so welcome everyone to uh, Sunday with Monday. This is uh, replacing Sunday at church. Uh, we're, we're so international, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we got Corn Zuko with us this, this afternoon. I'm really looking forward to this time together. Known Kareen for a, a while. I don't know when you started coming to some of the lectures I did on the Unity of Neptune in New Jersey, but that's when we first met, I think. And uh, getting to know her better as time goes by. She's written this wonderful book called From Anxiety to Love. We'll be introducing her a little bit more formally in just a few minutes. Hello. Hi. I'm so there happy to be here. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me, John. And it's it's so good to be with all of you. Well, thank you. I, I see that a lot of people have already read your book and that's uh, that's exciting, but we want to hear more about it. And Actually, I think one of the first questions that I have, of course, is uh, how did you come to A Course in Miracles? And then uh, why did you write this book? And we'll just go from there. The way we're going to go for till about uh, one o'clock and then we'll break and we'll just have dialogues after that. Just, Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, how I came to the course, I'll, I'll tackle that question first. I... Mm -hmm. And some of you who've, who've been in my world have heard some of this before, but I was pretty much born with anxiety. I had my first mm -hmm. psychiatric diagnosis of separation anxiety disorder when I was around two years old. Wow. As I grew, the anxiety morphed into phobias as a child. And when I was in college, which is a time when mental health issues surface for a lot of people, I was no exception, and a student who I didn't even know died very suddenly of an illness. Supposedly, this person was at a party one night and then found dead the next morning. And that night, I guess morning, because it was around three o'clock in the morning, I woke up thinking that I was dying. I was having my first panic attack. I didn't know what it was, but I we didn't have cell phones back then. We had a, a phone with an actual wire. And uh -huh. I remember climbing down my bunk bed with my knees so shaky that I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to hold my own body up. I grabbed the phone. I dragged it out the door to not wake up my roommate. And I called home. And by a miracle, my mom picked up the telephone and figured out with me that I was not dying, that I was having a panic attack. And she said to me, Corinne, I know you've not wanted to hear about this spiritual pathway that I've been into called A Course in Miracles because she had already been studying the course for a few years and had tried to talk to me about it. And if you know what happens when a parent tries to offer something helpful to a child, typically what we do is resist. <laughs> and that's what I did for quite some time. I didn't want to have anything to do with it until I was at my, my absolute rock bottom. And on the bathroom floor, having a panic attack, and then I became willing to try anything. And that's really when my course journey began. That was January of 1997. And I've been a very dedicated student since then, largely fueled by, <laughs> by anxiety. And if I can just, um, I, I have a couple of, of slides because I want to, I want to give an overview of some of the different phases of my learning, because it's so interesting at this point in time, I'm going on 26 years of being a course student, looking back and sort of being able to see the different phases of my journey. Um, I do just want to share the book slide because otherwise I'm going to forget. And I'll tell you more about my, my phases of learning in just a moment. But if anybody struggles with anxiety, who's listening to this, I highly recommend um, my book. It is born out of my own experience. It's been translated into Swedish, Mandarin. You can see the English version, version obviously, and, uh, and Dutch. And it has all of the practices and tools from A Course in Miracles that were helpful to me in my healing journey. And there's lots of stories interwoven throughout the book. And John, you wrote a, a very loving and beautiful endorsement. And uh, this is my website, same name, from anxietytolove.com. And if you go to this website slash book, you can get to the book info. I have a podcast if you do slash podcast and then a masterclass also where we go into um, not, not only the content of the book, but, but beyond it as well. So that's my book, baby. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Mm-hmm. And I, to give a quick overview, what I want to do, I had some downloads come in last night as I was tuning into our time together today. And I'd like to take you through my journey and what I've, what I've learned and have been learning about healing our belief in separation, which is where all anxiety comes from. All fear comes from this belief in separation. Mm-hmm. And, you know, looking back, I can, as I said before, I can see these different characteristics of these different phases of my journey. And, and just to give you an overview. So I mentioned that I was introduced to the course by my mom. That was in 1997. And my first 12 years of studying the course, I could say that that was characterized by using the course as a band aid, by, by, running away from anxiety, you know, running to the book, reading things to make myself feel better, and then putting the book down and like going on with my day. And then 12 years into being a course student, I had another massive episode of anxiety. So this was summer 2009. And at that time, I thought I was doing the course, quote unquote, right, if there's such a thing. But I found myself right in the middle of panic attacks again, overwhelming anxiety. And I had to stop and think like, what, what's going on here? Like, what, what am I missing? And I realized that I had been using the course as a band-aid and what I did at this time in my sort of second phase of my, my, my next 12 years, because if you haven't already caught on, I seem to go through a pattern (laughs) every 12 years of a major upheaval. And what I realized was that I needed to stop running from the pain and stop and turn toward it and look at it with the Holy Spirit rather than almost fueling it as this like scary thing by wanting to avoid it and wanting to push this anxiety away. I had to stop and look. And then just, I'll I'll say a few more things in, in just a few moments, but just a quick sort of bird's eye view the next phase that I'm in now, I went through another upheaval <laughs> in 2021, summer of 2021, again, 12 years to the month. This time I did not go into debilitating anxiety, which was a very significant note for me, but I had really strong guidance where I was asked to actually release A Course in Miracles, release everything I thought I knew about it. And what ended up emerging was new levels of awareness and experience with with angels, with guides, with my soul. And I want to talk, uh, I want to talk a bit about the the soul today because this is something yeah. that I John and I were chatting about this and and yeah. um, just feeling so excited about about exploring the soul. Me too. I'm looking to that. We'll awesome. still, I'll get to it in a minute. <laughs> okay, okay, great, great. Um so I'll just add that in this the second 12 year period of my being a course student, when I stopped running from the anxiety and started turning towards it and looking at it, one of the lessons that came with that was this recognition that everything can be repurposed. All of our habits, all of our desires, as we turn it over to the Holy Spirit, we're basically giving the Holy Spirit permission to use our attachments, use our beliefs, use all of it to help us awaken instead of keeping us in fear. And my book, to answer your question, like, why did you write this, this book, my book came out of this second 12 year period where I stopped running and I started looking. And that's when I started really experiencing some deep healing. And I wrote this book over seven years. So if there are any aspiring authors listening, (laughs) It's okay if you're taking your time. <laughs> it took me seven years to write it within, within, after I was done, I think it was about six weeks. I already had three different offers from three different publishers. And so I, I knew it was something that I was tasked with, with doing. So the main lessons that I just want to mention, you know, about this period were really about looking with the Holy Spirit, you know, not running away, turning toward the difficulty, tor- turning toward the challenge. Um, holding on to nothing, you know, repurposing everything and not bypassing, like, like not. And what I mean by bypassing is not 
overlooking that which needs to be seen because um, if it's hidden in the realms of our subconscious and it's staying intact, you know, that's not bringing it out to the light for, for healing. So we really, we really have to, to look. Um, so before I start, I guess, getting into, to soul stuff, John, is there anything you want to, um, no, you're doing good. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to just speak a little bit more. I mentioned about this sort of next phase of my journey that I'm in where I was asked to release A Course in Miracles. And that was an act of faith. That wasn't, I'm still, A Course in Miracles is in my being. It's not anything that's separate from me. And I still consider myself a course student and a course teacher. And it's still my primary core operating system. But what I realize is that we can actually have our own beliefs and our own thoughts about even what the course says, that can turn into a block if we are being rigid with it, if we refuse to have experiences because they don't seemingly fit our course framework. And, and just to give an example, I used to like, I don't wanna say harshly reject the idea of angels, I was never really harsh. It just, did, it never really grabbed me. I never really was into it. So I was like, oh, the course mentions it. Like the course doesn't talk about it. So I'm, I don't really, you know, have a need to go into that. Well, when I opened, when I released my rigid gripping <laughs> to the course, what happened? But I, I actually had a vision of an angel where it was, um, mm -hmm. My eyes were closed. It was in the middle of the night. I, I woke up in the middle of the night and I saw the most radiant. I mean, literally, it was as if somebody had taken a neon green pen and drew the most intricate, beautiful drawing of what I saw were um, the base of wings, very, very large wings with and there was actually a pelvis in the center and down the wings was this cascading green light and and as it was happening actually as it i guess as it stopped i literally said well that was interesting <laughs> like i had no idea you know what was happening or what was really going on but experiences like this started when i started holding the course lightly and again i want to be clear hmm. Our curriculum is highly individualized. I needed to be very regimented with A Course in Miracles for years. My, my mind, my anxiety levels, like it, it they were um, quite strict teachers. I think I mentioned this in the book. My dad went to Catholic school and he'd always talk about his parochial school nuns and, and them being like really, really strict, harsh teachers. And that's kind of like how, how anxiety felt. It sort of motivated me to really keep up with my my inner work and my lessons and, and the coursework, but then there's come a point in my journey where I've now needed to open and, and let go. And light episodes have emerged where I've um, seen and actually in some cases interacted with, with lights that I believe are angels. And in one case was absolutely one of my deceased relatives who uh, was coming looking for uh, my assistance in healing. And basically, so, so the, the area that I want to focus on today with the soul is one of the areas that I am exploring and playing with right now, because I have joked around, if anybody's tuned into my recent podcast, because episode 30 onwards, I'm starting to unpack all of this, because to be honest with you, the amount that's downloaded is overwhelming. And, and it's, <laughs> it's like, which direction to go. So I'm slowly rolling out the story on my podcast with episode 30 onwards. And there's just, there's just so much here. One of the pieces of this has been learning more about the body's energetic system. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a physical body. We don't, course students don't argue with that. You know, we have organs and we have a physical body. There's also a subtle energetic body. There's a subtle energetic system. And 
I've been learning and studying that energetic system more lately because that's giving me some understanding mm -hmm. of um, maybe what happened with my body energetically that I'd open up and start having some of these more more mystical experiences. So, so again, if, if as I sort of roll this out and unpack all that's come through episode 30 onwards uh, in my, in my podcast is where I will be, where I'll be going. But before I start sharing about the soul, I, I do want to just highlight that you don't have to learn through pain. When people hear that, you know, right. you were a core student and then 12 years in, you had another panic, you know, math. And, and when I say it wasn't just panic attack, it was like a massive, massive knocked out on the couch, not functioning, that type of, you know, period. Right. But we don't have to learn through pain. This has just been, you know, my particular um, curriculum. And so I, I just have to give us permission that we that we know that. We often do that, though. I mean, it's it's like you have to learn through pain until you eventually get to the point and realize I don't have to keep doing this. Right. I mean, this right. is the kind of insanity. The course is actually very clear about that. And learning through pain is not fun. No. You know, crashing and burning and all that stuff is not. You could just get this. You could, and as as you move along as a course in miracle student, you should just get it. I mean, you should just see it, because those kind of openings should become more and more clear to you without too much trouble. Right. I really appreciate the fact that you said that you're taking the course lightly. Uh, <clears throat> at the same time, I'm, I'm, we're kind of in the same boat here. The course is absolutely central as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's the book, so to speak. And the teachings are incredible. It's impeccable, actually. Mm -hmm. At the same time that that's true, and while the course is a fantastic psychology, I mean, opening in terms of understanding how we became so insane, and therefore what we have to do to get out of it, I've said, you know, it's no accident that this was given to two psychologists at one of the predominant universities in the United States who could move in that, in that particular direction. But you're right. Uh, there's more out there. By more out there, I don't mean when you talk about the body, for example, in terms of the like the levels of energies and the chakras, of course, it doesn't say anything about that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not its business. The course says we're not bodies. Well, that's true. But in the meantime, you got a body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as we're in space time, we're going to have to deal with this thing. So how do we get this thing in alignment as well? I'm really interested in seeing what you say more about that and the soul. As you know, that's a topic that really interests me a lot. So run with it. Okay. Okay. I'll keep going. So, so again, John, I invite you to chime in because I, I yeah, just, right. um, I really resonated with our discussion about the soul the other day. And that's, that's the, the download that came in. So yeah. So getting to know my own soul hmm. has brought me into new layers of healing, new experiences and new layers of healing. And the soul isn't a topic that's spoken of all that much in A Course in Miracles. It actually says the term is controversial, hmm. perhaps because we have so much, so many ideas attached to what the soul is, but the course does reference the soul. And depending on which edition you look at, there will be more or less references to the soul. The CE and the Ur text um, have the most, the most references to the soul. But the point is that we have a soul, each one of us. Your soul is a real part of you. This is not just an abstract concept. And I have a slide here because I have, um, I put a slide together with some references to the soul in A Course in Miracles. So let me go ahead and share this. Can everybody see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. We're good. So you'll see that there we have, and I didn't pull all the references. This is just a snapshot, but we have some references that indicate that our soul is constant. It's in a constant state of harmony, for instance, or, or, or just um, a state of constants, let's say. The soul has no history being the same yesterday, today, and always. Hmm. Another term is that, I'm sorry, another quote is that the term salvation does not apply to the soul. In other words, spirit, which is in no danger and does not need to be salvaged. So we have references indicating that the soul is, is constant. It's in, you know, a, a constant safe place. And there are other references, as you can see here, that indicate that there's some type of growth to the soul that, and that the soul actually longs 
for us to set it free. So let's read these three, these three quotes. Whenever you are afraid, you are deceived. Your mind is not serving your soul. This literally starves the soul by denying its daily bread. So we can, and I can see this. I have a friend who yearns to be an artist and to focus more on her art and is caught in a job that doesn't serve her. And I literally can feel her soul crying out and feeling like it's starved because she's not able or doesn't feel at yet that she can feed her soul by jumping into her art. Another quote um, is about a reference about sex and physical birth that it enables, quote, souls to embark on new chapters in their experience and thus improve their records. So this, again, is indicating that the soul somehow grows. And I've always interpreted the records to be the Akashic records. And our, our final quote that I have here is that the miracle worker can only bless and this undoes the curse and frees the soul from prison. Mm. So isn't this interesting that we have these like quotes about the soul that kind of sound like they're like they're contradictory. And I'm just going to take this slide down now. I. So, so I'll just say, just to summarize again, these, these quotes point to how there's growth. And the, to the soul, the soul can starve when we're hooked in fear. And at the same time, the soul has no history being the same yesterday, today, and always. This, to me, indicates that just like we have a split mind, part of us hasn't left God, part of us is dreaming a dream, maybe the soul is at home in God and there's an aspect of it that's affected by our choices here. And there's a quote that I don't have a slide for this one, but in the course, it says that the soul would be an equivalent of spirit with the understanding that being of God, it is eternal and was never born. Mm -hmm. So the soul being equivalent to, to spirit and with this idea that it's constant and yet, you know, can be affected by us. Um, I want to talk about how these words carry a different connotation to me. But before I do that, John, do you have anything you want to chime yeah, in? Let's, can we throw another word in? Uh, how about the relationship to the word self, self and soul and spirit? Are you seeing self and soul kind of on the same level as well? or I, Well, it depends which self. Are you talking capital S self? Yes. Yes. So capital I see, S. yes, the capital S self is like the soul. I, and do you agree? What do you think? Yeah, I think so. There's there's actually several lines in the course where it talks about things like your true identity mm -hmm. is a phrase that he uses. Mm -hmm. And like you said, that that has never been lost, which is a, the same kind of an idea. But I think it fits in with the course's idea that what's happening in this world of, in this time is that we're dreaming. So the dream is something that's happening. It body wise it seems very real but all these different words that we're using here soul spirit self you think this is all the same thing maybe there's subtle nuances but but as far as i feel right now yes it feels it it feels the same the soul the capital s self the spirit um on that level of formlessness you know one of the ways that i think that we that the, the, the word soul is controversial is the way we use it and we say poor soul sweet mm. soul you know like like but that's giving personality qualities to it mm -hmm. at the same time we're sort of recognizing there's something deep in that person there that has these kind of qualities that we also regard as eternal go on you're you're doing great <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> no i i well i love that we're talking about this because this is one of the newer areas that I've been hmm. playing in, you know, as, yeah, as I yeah. hang out sort of at the edge of A Course in Miracles, that's sure. really been bringing some felt sense of my true self, of me beyond time and space. So, right. so with the words spirit and soul, so the Course, I, I just shared a quote that the Course says that these two terms are equivalent. Course is their equivalent. To me, they carry a different connotation. And I'm wondering if, if everybody just kind of tunes into those words, spirit and soul, mm -hmm. if you can sense a different connotation. For me, 
I tend to think of my spirit as something rather abstract. I don't really relate to it. It feels more separate from me. But the word soul has a much more personal felt Mm -hmm. sense than spirit. I can identify with my soul. I can connect with my soul. It's the true me. Um, But my spirit feels more disembodied or abstract. Do you you relate to that, John? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so in, in living on the edge of A Course in Miracles, <laughs> with exploring <laughs> these, these, you know, teachings that it mentions, but doesn't fully dive into, I've been finding it very helpful. And this is also coming out of what I'm learning about um, the body's energetic system. I've been finding it very helpful to think of my soul as being in my body. I can think of this as a tool, not for separation, but for re-identification with who I really am. So there's a different purpose here in thinking in, in thinking of my soul inhabiting my body. Again, we can take that and think, well, oh, aren't I like backing away from God and pulling away from God? I'm saying that, that under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, this is a repurposed tool that can help us re-identify with who we, with who we really are. And I have another, I, I'll, I'll make a, a course link here. I have another slide. This quote okay. is one of my favorite quotes that come through. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll read this and let these words just sink in. You are wholly lovely, a perfect shaft of pure light. Before your loveliness, the stars stand transfixed and bow to the power of your will. What do children know of their creation except what their creator tells them? You were created above the angels because your role involves creation as well as protection. You who are in the image of the father need bow only to him before whom I kneel with you. And I want to focus for a minute on the first line. You are wholly lovely, a perfect shaft of pure light. I love this quote. I absolutely love it. So as I mentioned before, I'm currently studying energy healing and the energetic body. And as I mentioned already, the body has a, an energetic system. And at, in the center of the subtle energy body, We all have a central channel. It's the center of our energetic system. It's a central meridian, if you're familiar with the the meridians from um, Eastern traditions. And in course language, you know, the course is saying you're a perfect shaft of pure light. I do think in this quote, it's talking about us outside of like, like beyond time space in terms of being a perfect shaft of pure light. But coupled with my studies of the energy system in the body, and that there's this central channel of light in the body. I started just sort of like bringing these two ideas together for myself in my own journey. In this channel, according to energy, the energy medicine and the chakras in this channel, ideally should only be the light of your soul and the love of God. That's all that should ideally be in this central channel but we are seeming human beings <laughs> with seemingly separated minds. We have thoughts, beliefs, fears, guilt. We have these things embedded in our central channel. And I think it's part of the process of how we actually seemingly created these dense bodies, but I don't know. That's just, that's just an idea. Right. So from an energetic perspective, and again, this isn't a course in miracles, but from an energetic perspective, As we clear out that which doesn't belong in the central channel, it's taught that the soul then has more room to take up more space in the body. And John, this is just a fascinating idea to me, but you had told me something about, um, weren't you following or listening to another teacher talking about the soul being in the body? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matthias DeStefano. Right. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. His analogy, so, Paul, just very quickly, his analogy is <clears throat> the soul, what he says is the body is earth, the soul is like water, and the spirit is like air. Those, those are his 
way that he broke broke the whole thing down, but I, I can kind of understand what he's talking about. Also, something that's very interesting, if I can relate to what you're just saying, I just something I was watching last night on YouTube, talking about light, about a shaft of light, and how we're also like these energy vibrations. And then the thing to do is to get that down to where it's a pure shaft, rather than this kind of wobbling back and forth. And that reminds me of the line from the Gospels where Jesus says, straight is the way, narrow is the gate that leads into life. Few there are that go therein, broad is the way, wide is the path that leads to destruction. Many there are that go there. So it's like that analogy was like we're walk, but like this, where we really want to just get like this, yeah. where it's straight, like a shaft of light. <laughs> I love that. I got goosebumps when you were sharing that because that is so telling. I mean, that's anxiety. That's our, our, our vacillating. That's our yeah. ego. You know, that's being yanked from side to side by the things in the world and our stressors and, you know, our beliefs and all that. So I, I love that image. That's really it's powerful. To go along with that image, the, the way this is, I mean, the, the, when, it, when there's a pure shaft, it's an alignment, alignment. And then when we're, when we're like this, we're, we, you're partly in alignment because you keep crossing the line. I mean, you keep coming back to the center there for, for a moment, but you can't hold it in the center. So because you can't hold it, it's not kind of pure light because it's spread out too much. It's all over the place. Which was where you get back to your anxiety. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I love I love what people are writing in the chat. Um, Bud just wrote, be still and know I am God. There you go. Florian the just wrote, too. Florian just wrote the still mind, the holy instant. Yeah, I, I picture that. Like in that in that still channel, that's where we experience holy instants, revelation. You know, it all comes from these these moments of of be still and know that I am God. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. This is this is so exciting. Yeah, it is. Um, so did you want to chime in anything else or should I keep no? Going? Go ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll interrupt you. Some, some <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So. You know, you in in my experience, I've been practicing actually feeling the central channel of my subtle energy body. And when I say feeling, I'm really visualizing it. I'm visualizing it as a perfect shaft of pure light. And I picture it flowing from the top of my head down through my tailbone. If I'm standing down through my legs, but if I'm sitting, I picture it going from the top of my head through my core down my tailbone and into the center of the earth. So I'm grounded and connected in, in you know, both, both directions. And this central channel is taught that it's our, our prayer channel, our devotion channel, really just like what you described about this coming to this you know, center. This has been really helping me feel more connected to my soul and yeah. to God. So Thinking of your soul. Another line in from the course that we were talking about in class this week. There's this line says, <clears throat> You are unhappy because you're not fulfilling your function. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's like that's the function is the straight path. So we wandering around, that wandering around is giving us this lost feeling because again, we're not centered. Right? It, it's wonderful how, how it all fits together. <laughs> right. It's it. I'm so perfect. It, it, this is where I just, I so appreciate you as a course teacher that you're exploring this also and are open to this because um, sure. that, that support I think is, is everything for me. Cause I know I've had some fear about starting to talk about something that's, you know, not strictly by the <laughs> book and forget that. So <laughs> yeah, I think that we have to watch out for becoming course in miracles, fundamentalists mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by fundamentalists. I mean, to say, no, it's just the course and it, and, don't you, know, you just do the course? Don't worry about this. That's like becoming a Christian fundamental. It's Absolutely. just the Bible. Well, Absolutely. <laughs> yep. And I've I've seen in my own life um, that rigidity of sticking to what the course says destroy relationships. So that right there is an indication that there's something. At that not point, right. it becomes judgmental. You're off. You're off because you're not mm -hmm. doing exactly what the course says. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't do what the course says, and not that we shouldn't stick to that. Because mm -hmm. as I said before, it's golden. It's really, really clear. But we keep expanding in our consciousness and we keep discovering new things. And that's going to keep happening as we move into this 21st century, partly because of all the technology that's making it possible for us to communicate so incredibly well, much better than we ever have before. And therefore, we can find out a lot more 
about what's going on in other thoughts in other parts of the world, even with other religions, for example, Buddhism, right. for example. Right. Go yeah. back to you. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so just to sort of sum up, and I, I want to talk now about like asking the soul for guidance. I'll get there in just a minute. So just to sort of recap that, you know, thinking of your soul as inhabiting your central channel, you being a perfect shaft of pure light in the here and now, this can be really helpful as a touchstone of truth as you're walking around in your, your day-to-day -day life. And if you think about it too, every time we release an old thought or belief, every time we choose a miracle, every time we have a shift in perception or an expression of love, we can think about it as that creates space for our soul to take up space in our, you know, our mind, our body, and our awareness of love's presence grows stronger because it's it's right here. You know, we're we're embodied and embodying that that shaft, that shaft of light. So, so that's just what I wanted to say for summing that up. And the next thing that I felt moved to talk about, to sort of throw out there, is this idea of you can ask your soul for guidance. Mm -hmm. If you think about the quote that we just read, let me bring that up again and we'll, we'll read it one more time because it's just so good. I just, I just, I'm so into this quote. <laughs> you are wholly lovely, a perfect shaft of pure light. Before your loveliness, the stars stand transfixed and bow to the power of your will. What do children know of their creation except what their creator tells them? You were created above the angels because your role involves creation as well as protection. You who are in the image of the father need bow only to him before whom I kneel with you. There are three things I want to highlight from this paragraph. First, we are equal with Jesus, who is our brother. It says in that paragraph, he kneels beside us. Second, we were created above the angels because our mm -hmm. role involves creation as well as protection. Uh -huh. And third, you are so lovely <laughs> that the stars stand transfixed and bow to the power of your will. I'm getting goosebumps. Wow. Yeah. This means that we are powerful. You are powerful. We are the holy children of God. You, each one of us is the holy child of God herself and himself or themselves. But we don't know our own power. We don't, you know, we've forgotten this. We don't know our own power and we give that power away all the time. Wow. So you can practice keeping your power by asking your soul for guidance because this is the true you. And of course, if you're in the flow with asking Jesus or the Holy Spirit for guidance, stick with it. I'm just sort of throwing out another option. Um, aside from God, no one knows better than you as the holy child of God. You're equal with Jesus. The angels don't know better than you. They're merely reflecting what's already in you. So when we, you know, I've, I found myself, the, the lights that, that show up that I mentioned before, I started like, well, let me ask them. Yes. Let me, you know, the yes or no questions. Let me ask them this. Let me ask them that. And one of my, my teachers that I'm studying from reminded me and the class that I'm in, that the angels don't know better than you. They're just reflecting what's already in you. Now, again, I'm speaking as like, this is us as the holy child of God. We've forgotten this. So of course we, the course is all about asking for guidance and we need to ask for guidance because we've forgotten who we are. But this is just all a reminder that what I'm saying about asking your soul for guidance um, is, a, is an option. And it's also important to recognize that there can be a temptation in that for the ego to get in there and blow itself up thinking like, I'm going to just ask my soul and, you know, I know better than, than God. And that's, <laughs> you know, that's not what I'm saying. Um, the ego might also try to equate asking the soul as asking your separate self. And that's not it e either. Um, when I'm talking about asking the soul for guidance, this has to be done with an understanding that your soul's will is God's will. Your soul is intimately connected with God. So coming to your soul is coming into God. It's, it's not a move of further separation or of mm -hmm. separating yourself from God's will. Instead, 
you know, it's, it's a joining with it. It's a emerging with it there. Mm. Um, do you want to chime in? You're doing good. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I get the, the, the feeling that the soul is kind of like, in the, the way you're talking about what it's like home. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's like present. It's like the place that you never left. It's like where you're supposed to be. Whereas when we slip off into ego, we've wandered into a far land, a distant land. And now we're trying to re get back to our soul again. We're trying to find, find this place, the home, that we look, that's a theme, by the way, in an awful lot of mythologies, you know, mm -hmm. Pilgrim's Progress and all that, going back home, finding our true nature, is, and which also fits in with the idea of this being a dream. That, in, in other words, what we really need to do is to, to wake up, to awaken, to remember who we, who we are in truth, which, we, which has never left us. There's a line in the Course that says, you, it sort of corrects what it says in the Bible says you can't lose your soul, <clears throat> but you can lose your awareness of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's losing that awareness of it that 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 bugs us. But, you know, because then you feel something is missing. And if 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 that's all there is, then let's keep dancing. I mean, <laughs> in terms of the world itself. Right. And there's where the anxiety comes in. And the anxiety comes in if that's all there is. Right. It's this, yeah, you know, it's about food and money and sex and relating and that's it <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. No. No. yeah wow um, yeah. so yeah i've just been i've been so inspired by yeah. um thinking of studying the soul yeah. embodying the soul um you know again it might feel at first like it's something separate or like i said before it can feel like if you're thinking about my soul that somehow you're separating yourself from god and as long as we're offering this practice to the holy spirit i feel like the holy spirit will use us to bring us will use the practice to bring us closer to to god and you know the other point that i wanted to make there's that section in a course in miracles on the misuse of empathy and um the section talks about giving your capacity to feel empathy to the Holy Spirit so we don't misuse it. And in a way, it's the same thing here for me that the capacity to identify with your soul in your body can be given to the Holy Spirit to assist you in actually coming to know that soul. So where it's it's like there's a yeah, there's that parallel there of giving our capacity to embody this central channel to Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit helps us come into that that state of knowing who it is that we that we truly are. And you know I'll, I'll also just add that when I ask the soul for guidance, my soul for guidance, it comes with you know humility and gentleness and a recognition of being one with God in your heart. And I did just want to throw out there that I have come to see guidance and intuition as very similar, if not, you know, identical processes. And mm -hmm. one way of thinking about our intuition, and this is one of the things from, from the um, teacher that I'm currently studying with, is that your intuition is the consciousness of your soul communicating through your body. I'll say that one more time. Your intuition is your consciousness of your soul communicating through your body. To me, that's absolutely a form of guidance. And the soul will communicate with us through the various channels in the body, the clairs. If we've heard of the clairs, this is not, this is something that I'll be sharing a lot more about down the road because um, I'm just, I'm so super excited and into this right now. We have clairvoyance. We've all probably heard of clairvoyance, clear seeing, clear audience, which is clear hearing. That's uh, on the extreme end. We have Helen Shuckman, who was extremely clear audience with hearing that inner voice, but clear audience can also come through as signs and symbols, like kind of hearing a message, even if it's not a voice. And then we also have clairsentience, which is the feeling sense when you feel something and, and um, yeah, that, that feeling sense is just really strong and claircognitive. I might interrupt for a second, again, to mention uh, 
Matthias de Stefano, I was listening to a lecture again about hemorrhage, and he referred to what you're just talking about as a hunch. The mm. hunch that's that's the feeling level, as opposed to the intuitive level, which is more intellectual. The more right. it's an right. intuition that's more associated with the mind, whereas the hunch, which is what you're talking about now, more in the feeling level, it's like you 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 really really want to trust that the, the mind figures it out but the feeling level something's not quite right or something is quite right you know i'm falling in love that's quite right <laughs> i'm right. falling out of love oh my god that's not right <laughs> right right <laughs> and that feeling level the clear sentience that is our gut feeling like when you have those gut, yeah, gut. That's the gut word. feeling that's that's your clear sentience yeah. um and then the, the last one is clear cognizance so when you just know something yeah. Like, you know it because you know it because you know it. That's that's the clear cognizance. Right. So I love thinking about the soul using these channels to communicate um, with us. And we can tune in to each of these channels to see, you know, what comes forward. And, and I love thinking about how this is just the soul um, communicating with you and that you don't need to give your power away to to anyone else because you your true self is communicating with you god consciousness christ consciousness you know it's all it's all in us it's not it's not outside of us it's exciting isn't it i mean it's, it's exciting just to be alive right <laughs> and to be engaged in the process of of figuring this stuff out of understanding really who we are and where we are rather than just kind of being lost in this world which I think so many people are just kind of lost. I mean, they have these feelings and stuff, but uh, not grounded and, and not knowing what's really worthwhile. Uh, so they just kind of <clears throat> live without exploring. It's really important that we, that's why the Course in Miracles, I study, we study this. It's a course in miracles. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always encourage students to take, and one of the things that Kim Wabi used to say, like, take it deeper, take it deeper. There's, you know, if, if there's more meaning here than you realize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where the releasing of what I thought I, you know, I needed to release what I thought A Course Miracle said mm -hmm. in order to let, I mean, mm -hmm. it's holographic, right? Like you read one sentence. I'm sure this has happened to all of us where you read a sentence, you underline it. And then a few years down the road, you read it again and you're like, wow, you know, I get it on such a deeper level now, but I'm, right. I read it before because I underlined it. I don't remember under, you know, I don't remember getting this before it's dropping in on a different level now. Yeah. That's, that's to me how the course can get ever deeper as we oh, yeah. read, you know, read the passages. That, that and, happens so much in the course, you know, I've been doing it as you know, for a long, long time and it still happens. You know, it's still like, <laughs> why didn't I see that before? And and it is so impeccably clear that that makes you wonder. But you're moving deeper, which is what's the exciting thing is. So it it doesn't have an end until we're done, so to speak. Right, right. And this, I mean, if I can just share too, just you know, in the the since we started just you know mentioning my my book and my journey with anxiety, I mean. I almost don't have words. This is like the ultimate anxiety buster, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that like, like connecting with my soul, my, my self outside of space time to have um, these mystical experiences that are showing me that, you know, we live in what space time is four dimensions and there's so much more, yeah, you know, yeah. to our existence yeah. than that. And just to have these experiences um, it's, it's like learning that, quote, if you knew who walks beside you on the way that you have chosen, fear would be impossible. I used to get so, um, one of my greatest anxiety triggers was health concerns and health fears. And if something was wrong with my body and it's just been, you know, so interesting lately, I've had a couple of things come up and it's, it's, I've just had this like knowing that it's going to be okay. You know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. going to be fine. And there's not that, that switch into from zero to 100 of yeah. panic like there used to be yeah. and i'm able to step back and see myself and feel so grateful for all that the course has given me and um for all that's coming forward now and like you said it's an exciting time to be alive it's an intense time to be alive mm -hmm. I, i'm not gonna <laughs> you know 
not yes. state that because it's super, super intense, but there is, we have literally, each one of us have said yes to being here at this time. There's not a mistake that we've come at this time. And so, um, you know, how are we going to do so that. That's that You can't help but be in the right place at the right time. It's, there are no accidents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of the fact that we've been going on for almost an hour, just you and I uh, talking. And we used to do two hours worth of class and take a 10 minute break halfway through, but we're just 90 minutes now. So really at this point, uh, Bud, you got anything you want to share with us about what's been happening in the uh, chat? And then after that, we'll see some students want to come in and ask questions of Corinne. Corinne. <laughs> it's been a lot of cheering and enthusiasm on the topic. And a lot of folks are just sharing their insights of what they feel in a complete agreement and support. Some of the terms are a little unusual for some of the folks, the, the psychic terms, the, the, the various clairs, I added a few comments in there. Uh, and if you look up any of those words online, by the way, you'll get a much better definition than the time it would take to explain each of these. Yeah. And so why don't you go ahead and just invite folk in to talk then, John and All right. Um, Tucker, you're up first. Hey, oh my God, I'm so full of gratitude for both of you guys for getting this thing going. Uh, what, what the, what the, what the, what this, the thing is that you uh, have pointed out that, that there, a, a lot of people tend to get reified with the course, that they get so hardened in their idea of what they think is it. And it's what the, the, the Christians used to do with the Bible, where the, the punishing God of the, and the Psalms that uh, I just uh, are related with the minister that came comes in to exorcise me, uh, that uh, Psalm 11, 13, and 51 uh, 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 were, uh, they, they, they were just talking about the punishing, angry God that was, you know, was there. And, 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 and we, we don't need that. No. At, at all, and, and the, the the what the Helen was able to come up with was the the real preaching of what Jesus was talking about. It wasn't that he died uh, on the cross, and you know we all should feel shame at uh, having done that. But right. but that, that he it was a, an, a a chance for rebirth in ourselves, and so that that having been said, that that that's what I get from all the the wordplay that you guys have and stuff going on. And I look so forward to the next book that you're going to do, Corinne, because, because I, I, I think that that so many people, because of COVID, because of the climate change, and I'm not sure whether you're a spiritual teacher, and maybe you'll reveal who it is, but uh, Greg Braden has done more for me uh, <clears throat> on humanity's team with this uh, plot for the uh, the the, uh, the future of humanity. Uh, it's a seven part plot that he's so clean and clear on on stuff. I, I don't know if you know Greg Braden, but but he he uh, that that uh, he he has made it more clear that because of all this information that's coming into us now, that 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 uh, you know the the internet, the, the the all this stuff that we have seven ways to change the planet so that the Pachamama Alliance can be really um, uh, done. In, I'll in check way. that out. Yeah, I'll yeah. check that out. Can I jump in and, and just respond to a couple things that you shared? Oh, of course. My and God. <laughs> and your name's Tucker, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tucker, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I'm putting in the chat for everybody, the teacher that I'm studying with, her name's Wendy DeRosa, and her book is called Becoming an Empowered Empath. Um, and I definitely recommend it. I definitely recommend picking it up. What I wanted to just say about your role as a psychiatric social worker and the medicine and, you know, um, being classified I and, and spiritual emergences, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I did not ever understand that I have all the clairs <laughs> and it's <laughs> overwhelming. It's, it's, it leads to a lot of sensitivity and a lot of anxiousness and and a lot of, um, in my case, absorbing energy that's not mine. So one of the 
questions that I would encourage all of us, if we find ourselves sensitive, if we find ourselves anxiety prone, um, to ask ourselves the question, what is mine and what is not mine? Because when I started to discern, okay, here's my part that I need to look at, but this other stuff is not actually mine. That's this other person's. And I have um, to pull back my own, you know, my own energy, my own uh, soul, my own uh, psyche, whatever you want to put it, to w- focus and work on myself because what I was doing was, was taking a lot of things on that weren't mine and it was leading to a whopping amount of anxiety. So thank you just for the spiritual emergence and the recommendation of Greg Braden's work. I'll have to check that out. Let's thank go you. on to John Sunday. Well, well, what, what, one other thing that I just want to point out to her that the, that the, the, the Tibetan idea of the chrysanthemum is that if you go into the, the, the bottom of the, uh, the jewel is the heart of the lotus, that, that if you plumb it, plumb out the stuff that, that is the dirt that makes for the beautiful flower, that, that when you don't have to be afraid of, of, of those things that, right. that, 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 yeah. that uh, when, when we can go into what has made us into who we are, whether it's ancestral stuff or, or personal things or parenting stuff or any of those things that, that it's, it's a wonderful journey these obstacles that we have to, to uh, uh, as John has assisted me inordinately in, 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 uh, in all the stuff that I come up with, my daily bullshit that I have. That uh, Thank you, on. Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's go to John Sunday. John? <laughs> Thank you, Tucker, for your daily bullshit. <laughs> I love you, Tucker. You're, you're a great speaker. <laughs> I'm a speaker. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> first of all, I want to thank both of you, you two for your beautiful talk here today. Because I first, John, I really love when, when you pointed out something's missing. That there's a lack going on here, you know, around this anxiety. Now that I just need to be reminded of that. And then you talk about you know something's lost. We just got to explore and go deeper. And just to be reminded of that, of that it's just so, so, so great. I really appreciate you so much for that. So, and the, and as we go deeper, um, Karina, I just love what you're saying. And I, I want to run a couple of things by you in terms of um, uh, understanding. And um, because I, I take, I love that you, you're getting your information from the sources that you get it from, you know. And that's because that's what, that's what I, I've been looking for and study myself, you know, d- different sources of information. I do love the Bible and, uh, you know, like w- what it says about the soul. And it, it just, uh, uh, and I, I c- can't get it out of my mind. Uh, the Bible gives the following the definition. Uh, uh, God formed man of the dust of the earth, breathed into the nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That was something he became. Mm. So that's, that's like, so like, so I have to look, I look at, you know, like that's a source that I use and, and, and Quite, quite usefully so, because science says nothing about a soul. It has nothing to say. I mean, Freud starts talking about his psyche and stuff like that. So we, we've been exposed to, to new knowledge, but broadly, there's nothing to be defined there. But what I would like to, to run by you is, um, and the, the, you, all your quotes from this uh, CE edition, they're so beautiful, Kareem, because that first one from page 14, when it deals with creation, it, it, it spoke to me, and I, I just run this by you because although it had nothing about the soul, that is the function in my understanding of the soul. It, it's a creator made in the image. It, it does create. It has the ability to choose. It has the ability to act that no form of life had until, until man came on the scene. And so basically, um, for, for me, Kareen, when I hear you talk about something that we have, that's that's it's a really a big a soul is something that we have is is a really big misinterpretation of what a soul is because something a soul is something that we is is something that we are and we have a body like a pair of shoes or, or something like that <laughs> and we then it's a soul and the only the only way that my teacher taught, taught me is this can be defined in its relationship with its source which which is spirit because the spirit is what we what that showed up here where we don't know nothing where it came from, from it says God, but no, there's no definitions of God. And so the, uh, consequently to understand the soul and, and its destiny necessitates a comprehension of each part of 
man's fourfold nature is body, mind, and soul, and spirit. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, and I like the way you kind of put it together, but that, that's basically, we have to look at all parts of this. So basically I just, I'm, that's just my, my understanding and appreciation for, for your work, especially re- relative to uh, your, your shout out about the anxiety. I mean, because that speaks to every one of us. So, so you know, so that's so beautiful. And the, the function of the soul to choose, to actually choose and select ideas. To work with ideas, no form of life can do this. This is something we have, and so anyway, I I, I won't go on. Otherwise, um, I won't join. Uh... John, I love what you just said, and I just mm-hmm. want to repeat it again so it sinks in for all of us. It's it's you know, um, well, I just want to repeat what you said that we are a soul and we have a body. You know, we we, we seemingly have one here. I love that, hands down, one hundred percent. I agree. This is one of the first. Actually, I think this is the first time I've ever spoken about the soul and what's coming through. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm fumbling my way through, you know, with, with, and, and this is where we all, and this is where I've always loved um, the group setting. We all together are piecing it together. You know, it's like um, we pick up on something that, wait a second, isn't it this? And we can tweak it a little bit and it all, you know, so, so just thank you for, for throwing that out there. Cause I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. And I love that. Well, I'm not looking for agreement. I'm just looking. I'm just looking for. Uh, I'm just looking for an, uh, you know, an understanding of of for myself, and that that includes going deeper. And, and I'm 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 looking for my uh, looking for my connecting my dots too. And so I love you for that. And John Monday, I love his I love his shows. You know what he what he presents, and bringing the guests that he does. So anyway, I'll, 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 I can't wait to hear what the other people have to say. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's go on to Lynn. Mighty companions, we're on fire. Oh my God. <laughs> thank you so much, Corinne. Oh, Lynn, thank You're you. You're a delight. You really are. I um I uh I was my life, a lot of my life, I was told I had major depression. And they were right. <laughs> um it's it's amazing. It's amazing when you can see the world so differently yeah um, really and I remember when I found my angel my angel I remember I couldn't get warm and I, I was trying everything I even I had a tape of a fireplace I couldn't get warm and then I felt something inside of me that uh I I started crying in gratitude and uh, I, I, I prayed that this angel would take me over. And then I started getting poetry from my angel, <laughs> Lynn, you know, his angel. Um, this, was, this was back in April 2015. Why do you fight your power? Ha- hearing set to a program mind. Your source energy always available, able to rescue from any story. Let tears flow, yet look further. Wow. Very nice, honey. Oh, Lynn, that's Very beautiful. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, my God. You know, you just prompted me. For anybody who's interested in angels, I've been reading, I'm putting it in the chat, Angels in My Hair by Lorna Byrne. If anybody's read that book, it's, um, I've just been so inspired by that book she's been seeing and and interacting with angels since she was a child and she does come from a christian framework so there's some sort of you know um christian concepts in there with satan and whatnot but the angel piece is really really cool if anybody wants to explore that lynn thank you for that that beautiful share and thank yeah. you <laughs> yeah. let's go to beatrice beatrice hi beatrice hi corinne oh hi, hi corinne. So Nice to see you. Hi, John and everybody. Hi. I'm so grateful to be here. And it was Cheryl Thompson who prompted me twice. I wasn't going to come, but I thought, okay. And I'm so grateful I did. Good. I, I want to share a few visuals. Um, what you're offering today has served to, I'm almost feeling like I've been reconnected with um, a sibling, a little sister who I got separated from at at ch- during childhood and lost my memory of i'm feeling i'm feeling that 
and I and the other visual is I'm feeling like I've been reconnected with an appendage and I know the soul is not an appendage it's who I am but I am feeling like you expressed very clearly I've been studying the course now daily for about 23 years um spirit has seemed and continues to seem something distant from me and due to the anxiety that i suffer from and the depression uh i have lulls when i collapse and i can't access any anything and the so being reconnected with the with the concept of the soul i almost feel like i i have a, like there's a me back mm. so and it has a sense of weight and i know weight is a physical concept but if it helps it helps yeah. and um I, I don't just i don't feel like i'm floating in space lost in space so much because the soul it just like it's like my heart of hearts my soul who i really am you know and it's it has a a warmth to it and a real it has a bot i'm going to use the word body not in the way we talk about but it has a it's a body to it and this is also i think if i work with it going to help me with my horrible fear of death mm -hmm. because i i feel like i'm who what where i'm nothing mm -hmm. without the bot and now the soul gives me a place to live yeah which is I'll be a trust so um i'm so glad i came oh, i'm so glad you're here hon. i'm so glad you're here i hope that I wish, we continue to i wish i could give you the biggest hug <laughs> yeah go like that i'm doing that too everybody who wants to join in on the group hug sure. thank you so much because it's been really hard for me you know, and I think I was about what it is for everybody who is fear, fear of death. You know, I think death is going to be such a beautiful surprise for everyone <laughs> when you get reconnected with the soul and out of this weary world of, of, of anxieties that we got here. That's just, you know, you, nothing is lost and everything is gained when they to lose. What do you lose when you lose an illusion? Yeah. And and Beatrice is just speaking so beautifully to how we can reconnect with that soul now. Like that's the work, you know, it's now. No. It's not we're, we're not just meeting the soul, you know, later. It's it's now. We can open to this now. So I just oh Beatrice, you're goosebumps and my heart is just beaming and hugging you. And thank you so much for sharing. And I'm so glad you came. Thank <laughs> so you. Fun. Thank you very much. Thank you, Beatrice. Let's go to Jim. Hey, Jim. Yep. Hello, John. Thank you. Uh, Corinne, I'm always looking for, you know, what are the five steps to overcome anxiety? And um, I have been on a, you know, a search for all my life. And the course is really important as part of that. Uh, and I do believe in souls. And I believe we're here for uh, to learn and expand and a soul chose, my soul chose something big for me to learn. And I've been trying to learn that all my life. And I, it, it, it's wrapped up in anxiety and definitely separation. Uh, separation as having, and, and I came to this this morning, really believed that from my early childhood experience, I was a victim and i hadn't let that go mm. i hadn't found a way to overcome it but certainly facing it and and getting it to the, the degree i did today makes it a lot easier to say i don't need that um and i too am an empath and have trouble taking on you know stuff that isn't mine so I, i'll look at those um resources but if if there is a pathway out of anxiety obviously it's not a one two three kind of process and yet it may be in some broad context that i'm not aware of and i would love to know what your take is on that 
Oh, thank you, Jim, for the question. Um, you know, if you want steps, pick, <laughs> if you haven't read this series, yeah. I put everything that has been helpful to me in, in, you know, at the time that this was published, coming to this point, I don't explore the soul in this. This is what's just coming through recently. But the the steps, the process, I we were just talking with, with Bud before we went live about the sort of quote unquote academic parts of ourselves. You know, I'm a, I'm a um, part-time professor. And so there's, there's prompts and journal prompts and um, questions to reflect on, meditations that go along with this. That, that to me is the how-to. If I had to boil that down into what is like the one thing that has helped me overcome the debilitating fear I used to struggle with, if I had to boil it down, it would be literally hold on to nothing and place it all in the Holy Spirit's loving arms. My attachments to Corinne, work, like relation, like all of it. Like I want a divine repurposing of everything. Holy spirit, I give it all to you goals, like all of it. And the ego gets freaked out and afraid that we're going to like lose something in doing that. But that's where we start to find ourselves. That's where we start to find who we are because we're not hanging on. Like you just mentioned that, like a belief in being a victim, like, you know, all those things, it's all that tiny willingness to see that differently. I mean, that's, if I had to boil it down, that's what it would be for me. So um, I just want to say for all of us, for anybody listening, who's struggling in any way, shape or form, that healing is possible. And in the end of the book, I share words that my stepdad had said to me when I was on the couch, absolutely knocked out from anxiety. He looked at me and he said, Corinne, and I say this to you and I say this to everyone listening the light in you is too bright to fail. You are that light. That is who you are. And the more we just get all the gunk, like, like, and I, when I say get the gunk out of the way, I mean, just, again, it's that releasing, it's that releasing it all into the Holy Spirit's hands. We will come to know who it is that we truly are here. The light in you is too bright to fail. Thank you, bud, for posting that in the, in the one, one, um, Question would do you believe that you have finally overcome anxiety? So I love that question. <laughs> I am a human being. I am fully human. I experience a full spectrum of human emotions, and that includes fear and anxiousness from time to time. When I say I've overcome anxiety, I have not, and this 2021 was was kind of like the, the test for me. I did not go off the deep end into the debilitating anxiety. Could I again? Maybe. I'm not going to say it's it's totally, you know, I, I don't know. Like if, if who knows what would happen? Could I go there again? Maybe. But that to me is not the goal. The goal to me is whatever happens, where, who am I going to turn to? Am I going to turn, you know, back to my, my ego and trying to fix it? Or am I going to go more deeply into God? Am I going to release and go more deeply into God? So, um, so again, I have not gone into the depths of panic in some time now, but I, I still experience emotions. I still have a brain. I still have the whole, you know, the whole like limbic system and, and all that going on. And um, this is, you know, not a course in, in not feeling. <laughs> um, to me, it's, it's all about embodying the truth of who we are in that, in that piece. And with the human experience comes human emotions. And so it's it's about having the tools and having that willingness to turn back to who we are versus the, um, you know, am I having another episode again? Okay, that really sums it up in a really nice way that the pathway is in the moment and mm-hmm. our choosing out of awareness where to go to. Because if I can just say one more thing about that too, if I were to decide, I never want to have anxiety again, I'm healed you better believe it's going to be a heck of a hard time if I do have anxiety again. So instead, that's that's just not the goal. I'm not afraid anymore of it coming back because I know I will find my way through it. I know there'll be some beautiful learning, you know, in that experience. And that to me is the success, you know, of not being afraid of it um, should it should it return. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Jim. I might add that in the, in the January, February issue of Miracles Magazine, which is going to be going in the mail in about a week. Both Beth Gear and I have articles about dreams in which we literally embrace the devil. 
Mm. The little and the embracing of the devil caused the devil to go away because the devil couldn't handle love. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Wow. I can't wait to read that. Let's go to Lisa. Lisa, hi. Good morning. I'm so hi. glad you're here this morning, all of you, especially you, Corinne. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, and, and every time I wrote down the title when I was taking notes in the beginning, of, it was from anxiety to, I never got that last word until today. <laughs> <I'm a miracle. laughs> I'm an anxious person. Um, I've been so all, much of my life, and I've gotten better at handling the anxiety, um, as you talk about, and accepting it for what it is. And not, I mean, I had a panic attack one time that I got to... I pulled my car off the road and I got to a gas station and my fingers were clawed up and my feet were numb and I couldn't speak. Wow. They understood me say somebody call an ambulance, but mm -hmm. I don't know how, you know, and, uh, and I used to carry a paper bag with me wherever I go. I no longer do that. Um, I, I have always been interested in and have a bit of a penchant for energy work. Um, I can really feel the energy go through my body and balance and, and it's something I hadn't done in a while. And um, I can use the energy in my hands to see how they change. My, the, the energy in my hands changes to find something that I'm missing. You mm -hmm. know, I used to do that a lot and I haven't done it in a long time. And I just, when you were talking about alignment and, and the, the shaft of light, I read something in the course a few days ago. Lesson 339 says no one desires pain, but he can think that pain is pleasure. No one would avoid happiness, but he can think he can think that joy is painful, threatening, and dangerous. And what would happen to me, I'd get I'd think I'd experience what I think was joy, and it would just go up and up and up until I didn't know where I was. I mean, it was uh it was very confusing for me. And I think what I've learned most important for me today is that I'm lacking the grounding that I need, you know, and I'm really, really grateful for you to, for, to you for helping me figure that out. And I can't wait to read your book. Oh, thank, thank, you. thank you, Lisa. I'm so grateful. Thank you so much for your honesty and your mm. sharing. I, this is a whole other topic is grounding because part of what anxiety does is bring our energy high up into the body. So we're very, very high up mm. in our heads, our neck up. And I, people would tell me you need to get grounded. And I'd be like, I don't know how, <laughs> like I, I literally don't. And it would make me very angry. And that's what I'm, that's my journey now is actually learning what that grounding is. And if I can just offer one tool for all of us, you know how we say we hand things over to the Holy spirit. We kind of have this like idea of handing it up. Yeah. Well, there's no up or down. So if you imagine, I've been very much into the divine feminine lately. If you imagine the divine mother at the center of the earth who does the same thing as the Holy Spirit, and instead of sending it up to the Holy Spirit, you offer it down through your grounding cord, through your body, down through the center of the earth, and she transmutes that. It's that shift, same thing, shift in perception, sh whatever yeah. the shift might be, she transmutes it and, you know, and it, it's transmuted into new life force for the, the planet. That act of sending down instead of up again there is no up or down it's the same spirit of what we're doing with handing over to the holy spirit but it also now is serving an additional purpose of getting grounded and staying in your body because the more present i'm finding the more embodied i am this is where the chakra work comes in the more we're learning how to inhabit our lower body and our lower chakras just like a tree sending roots down wide roots what happens when a tree has wide roots? Its canopy can expand. Those um, upper channels can open more widely, but you stay maintain maintaining that good. center, that grounding. Very so good. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Stephen, we're going to make this our last uh, question or observation. So come on, Stephen. Thank you. Um, this has been really beautiful, Corinne. Thank you so much. Uh, lots of... You were talking about sometimes you get overwhelmed with the downloads and the, the metaphors and the connections and the insights. And I, I love to think of the Holy Spirit as like a dot connector. It's just pulling everything together to help me see this 
a lot of things. Um, I, I, your book from anxiety to love, I was thinking you could, you'd have called, you could have called it from red to purple, um, from, from, di from dissonance to resonance or from, from base camp to peak. Um, but, but I think in terms of just that, that whole idea of the angelic realm, I think of that as more like um, personification of the, the, the climbing the ladder, if you will, uh, of, of um, the resonant, the frequency going from the lower realm to the higher realm. And then the, the jumping off point maybe is more in the purple realm of what I would consider more of the peace of the right minded point of view to where I'm, that ladder for me becomes like the journey from um, form and matter to content, getting more and more and more abstract. So I still need the personifications of angels and frequencies and vibrations to help me where I still think I am um, to get comfortable with the true identity, my, my true self. And what, what I love about what, one of the things Ken Watt said, re, I heard recently was that the, the, the decision maker, he calls it the decision maker. Well, that is the Holy spirit. So when you're praying to the Holy spirit for help, you're praying to the decision maker. And I thought it's kind of less glamorous and less sexy um, you know, I might want to think of Holy Spirit in other ways, but I thought actually it's like a direct message. I, I want, I need a direct message to impact me so that my mind is filled with light so I can see the path of re returning home. But I love that. I loved how you were talking about using a course and releasing the course. We're, we're told we have to forgive the course. We have to release this form <laughs> only to find a new layer, a new run on that ladder to, to, to appreciate it more, to go deeper climb higher just like we have to forgive jesus and I, I always thought that was an interesting concept of forgiving god and forgiving jesus and forgiving all my concepts of these things to help me tune in to the ultimate truth i was coincidentally reading um less than 240 this morning and when you were when you started talking and just your whole journey and experience of the anxiety i was thinking of the uh unholy trinity of sin guilt fear and guilt is the you know, the unconscious belief, the fear, you know, unconscious guilt is what we're trying to release, release, release from the belief in separation. So lesson 240 is fear is not justified in any form. And of course, I thought about, you know, the, the false evidence appearing real um, that we're all familiar with um, and how we just, in our in our perception, in my perception, and here's what, it, here's what it says. It, it's it, it's so, so simple, and you put it so beautifully in terms of your framing of it and your journey. But fear is deception. It attests that you have seen yourself as you could never be, and therefore look upon a world which is impossible. Not one thing in this world is true. It does not matter what the form in which it may appear. It witnesses but to your own illusions of yourself. Let us not be deceived today. And I thought, wow. For me to renounce the world, if I think of that word noun, it's person, place, or thing. So any person, place, or thing is a noun. If I have to renounce the world, forgive the world, release all images, well, that's quite an undertaking because that's pretty much any thought I have that's going to um, be anxiety-inducing because it's going to be projecting of unconscious guilt. So anyway... That being said, I just love, love you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your journey and pulling it together and just being honest with your experience of the angelic realms and the thoughts and the vibrations and the chakras to help us get back to that pure light. Um, I shared in the chat that I see that when you're talking, I just had the image of the Pink Floyd logo, you know, and, and the pure light. And then it refracts into our, I see that refraction as the ladder. It's like the ladder back, just climbing that ladder back and then getting it comfortable with what I unconsciously want to avoid. And that's my true identity. And the Toltec have a, a saying, the four agreements, Miguel Ruiz, that uh, you're going to, you're going to go back to hell because we're attract we're attracted to it. We're, we're, unco we're unconsciously attracted to it. But when you find yourself in hell, you have the tools to get out. You don't have to stay in hell so long. You can apply 534 for agreements from anxiety to fear, the tools that you're trying to pull together of your experience. So thank you. This thank has you just been you. a beautiful, wonderful morning. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, thank Stephen. You. Thank you. So we're really at the end of our time, but Corrine, do, would you like to uh, give us a summary close? And 
again, the soul is who we are. We can talk to it. We can call on it. We can embody it. We can be that perfect shaft of pure light. And as the words were spoken before of what my stepdad had said to me, I, I offer this to everyone to remember that the light in you is too bright to fail. Our work is right here, right now. And we have each other. We have John. <laughs> we have um, this wonderful community and we have the course and we have um, our own inner guidance system. And that's really, I, I think the main thing that I want to leave us with is I hope each one of us feels empowered that you, your guidance system is, is all that you need. You actually don't need external teachers. I know, you know, they're helpful and, and whatnot. They've been helpful for me on my journey, but remember to ask your own soul, tune in all that you seek is within you and the light in you is too bright to fail. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, friend. So we usually uh, end with uh, sharing the Lord's Prayer from A Course in Miracles. Uh, Leslie, are you there? And is Bobby on by chance? I don't, don't know. I just was asking. Hi, John. I am. Let me put the Lord's Prayer on the screen for you. Thank Hold you. on a second. There we go. So you want to do us a... Uh, mm -hmm. Bobby, thank you so much. Thank you for the privilege of sharing this promise that's in this prayer. Forgive us our illusions, Father, and help us to accept our true relationship with you, in which there are no illusions. And where none can ever enter Our holiness is yours What can there be in us that needs forgiveness When yours is perfect the sleep of forgetfulness is only the unwillingness to remember your forgiveness and your love let us not wander into temptation, for temptation of the Son of God is not your will. And let us receive only what you have given and accept but this into the minds which you created and which you love. Amen. Thank you, Bobby, as always. Thank you. It's absolutely beautiful. So thank you all for being with us today. And um, if you're interested in sampling a class this week, let me know, john at miraclesmagazine.org. And hope to see you back in the middle of January when Lee Jampolsky will be with us. And if I don't talk to you before, have a wonderful holiday and Merry Christmas. And uh, I'm sure I'll be seeing some of you again. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Corinne. Thank you, John. Corinne. Love you all. Corinne. <laughs> Love you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Corinne. Thank you, everybody. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.